things where if you don't know them, you will know them. Uh, Mark, you've got Mr. Duffy there lined up to go. And Tim Duffy is, if I remember right, the CEO of DX Engineering. It's all yours, Mark and Tim. I'll pass it over to Tim. Okay, good morning, everyone. And uh, it's great to be back in Oklahoma. <laughs> was my home for uh, 14 years. So do you hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, I'm Tim K3LR. I'm here at my uh, shack. This is not a green screen behind me. This is uh, actually two of the 11 operating positions here. And we're gonna talk about contesting today, which is one of my favorite subjects. And so um, I need uh, the host to allow screen sharing. <laughs> Can the host turn on screen sharing, please? He, he's, he's getting it. It'll take him just a second. I think we caught him cross-handed. Cross-banding in a meeting? Okay, you should have it by now. Okay, yes, that, that will work. And let me know when you see my slides. We're good. We've got it. All right, great. Here we go. We're going to talk about contesting this morning. And um, so it doesn't matter if you have a big gun station or a small station, uh, maybe a small station with a Hustler Vertical, like WB0YEA, you can have a lot of fun uh, with contesting. Uh, it, so you don't have to have the big stuff. And most people have uh, just NFED wires or verticals. And uh, the things that we're going to talk about today is uh, the variety of the contest types, getting started in contesting, and what's the object, and uh, some contesting resources as well. Uh, there are uh, three different types of contesters. There's the casual contester, the feisty contester, and the committed contester. And, uh, but the vast majority are casual contesters that just want to have fun, uh, maybe work some new countries, new counties, maybe they're chasing uh, worked all states. And uh, this weekend uh, that we're in the middle of right now, there are 14 different contests going on. There's a uh, several state QSO parties. In fact, the Pennsylvania QSO party will start at 16 Zulu today. And um, the uh, Scandinavian activity contest is on. Uh, I've been listening on 15 meters this morning and the band is wide open to Europe. It's really great. So what are the benefits? I mean, why contest? Well, it does improve your operating skills. There's no doubt about it. When you have to dig out stations and get uh, exchanges correct, and also you know, figure out exactly what the other station is saying for his call sign or her call sign. And uh, it, it is fun. Um, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you get the opportunity to talk to a lot of people over the course of a 48 hour period, for instance. And uh, if you look at the activity levels on our bands during the week, and then you look at it during a contest, there's a whole lot more activity during a contest. So um, it is that use it or lose it. So it, it's really good to use our stations and also uh, get the competitive juices going. And for some reason I'm locked up. Now that's interesting. Here we go. Um, there are plenty of, uh, big gun stations that you can go visit uh, if you want to do, you know, a guest operator. Um, but most of the stations uh, that you'll find in a contest are normal stations. And how to win a contest? Well, you have to 
work a lot of stations, work as many multipliers, and the multipliers can be prefixes, they can be states, they can be countries. You have to make good band change decisions too. Um, you, you know, you want to follow the activity and always go to the highest frequency band that is open. Um, you want to use efficient operating techniques. So, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Don't waste time. And uh, this is very similar to emergency operations. Or if even if you're doing uh, communications like we were doing this morning for a 5K race, you, you want to make sure that you abbreviate and uh, keep your transmissions as short as possible. So you, the best way to learn the, the most efficient techniques for contesting is to listen to other stations especially stations that you know will finish quite high in the standings. And it, it will be obvious to you after a while uh, who's doing it right. And uh, simple things like just saying test N2UT instead of CQ test DE N2UT can save a lot of time. And on phone, uh, you know, you say thanks VP5K instead of thank you, QRZ contest, this is VP5K. One of the big areas is in the exchange is just sending the exchange and not putting please copy in front of it. Uh, please copy just wastes time. Of course, they're going to copy it. So, you know, uh, saying 3A Oklahoma is much more efficient than saying please copy 3A Oklahoma. There are different types of contests. Uh, there's a, an SSB, there's CW, there's RTTY, there's digital. Uh, there's DX contest, national contest, and specialty contests. The most popular contest is field day. And some of you might say that field day is not a contest. Well, uh, if you look up uh, the, the actual factual meaning of contest, if you keep score, which we do in field day, it's a contest. And uh, there's, there's lots of different contests, the VHF contest, RTTY, field day, uh, the uh, sweepstakes contest, the 10 meter contest, uh, the CQ worldwide, and there are tons of state QSO parties. And uh, there's actually a contest for those who operate every state QSO party. So lots of contests within a contest. And you can be a single operator. You can also, uh, uh, have packet assistance. Uh, there are typically three different power levels, the QRP at five watts, low power at 100 watts, and then high power, uh, anything up to 1500 watts. And uh, sometimes uh, there are single band uh, categories and also multi-op single transmitter or multi-op multi-transmitter, which is uh, many operators operating up to six transmitters at once. And most of the contests are during the weekends. Some of them, uh, like the North American Sprint Contest, can be as short as four hours. Um, there are several that are 48 hours that start at Zero Zulu on Saturday and go to uh, Zero Zulu on Sunday. And oh, uh, by the way, uh, the uh, real good uh, contest resource is uh, the WA7 Bravo Norway Mike, WA7 BNM website. He's got a contest calendar and it is really good. So the ARRL has uh, some great uh, resources at ARRL.org. The contest update newsletter goes to over 100,000 people. And even if you don't operate contests, the contest update is a really good free online newsletter uh, there is a website, contesting.com, and the National Contest Journal is hosted at ncjweb.com. Best contest for getting your feet wet, field day, number one. Uh, also, the, the state QSO parties, Nevada, Arizona is this weekend, along with Pennsylvania. Uh, typically, the, the QSO parties for the states are a little bit uh, more laid back, and uh, it's a great way to get started. So what do you need? Well, you need radio and, and antennas, a logging system. You can use paper and pencil. Um, 
N1MM uh, computer-based logging software is free. It's the most popular uh, software and uh, it's available uh, for download right off the web. And you can uh, even have pre-recorded voice or CW exchanges. And you can interface it to your radio. Um, and that allows you to do point and shoot where you can have um, spotting information coming into the logging system and then basically uh, put your mouse over top and shoot and it will suck in the frequency and the call sign right into the logging system. So how do you report your results? US mail, uh, not so much anymore, but definitely email the Cabrillo file, which is generated by the logging programs is typically what is required to be sent to the contest sponsor. You can also uh, report your scores on 3830, which is unofficial, but it's a great way to see how you stack up. What can you win? Well, last weekend was the California QSO party and they were giving away bottles of wine for the top scores. Um, the Washington State QSO party has uh, smoked salmon. Uh, typically it's plaques and certificates. And of course you get the uh, awe and respect bragging rights of your fe fellow competitors. Um, you, there is uh, typically a local club that might be involved in contesting and may be affiliated with the ARRL. Here it's the North Coast Contesters. Uh, there's, a, there's a big club up in uh, New England and uh, there are lots of informal groups with email reflectors, and uh, you'll find them on Yahoo groups, and the CQ contest reflector. Just Google CQ contest reflector. And that is my presentation on contesting, and I believe you also asked about a uh, presentation on uh, Contest University, so let me bring that up as well. And... Uh, Let's see here, Contest University. All right, and uh, bring that up here, share screen, Contest University, share. Okay, so uh, the website is contestuniversity.com and that's where you'll find uh, uh, all the information about Contest University. The last one was held in person in 2019. And uh, uh, we have held two virtual events in 2020 and 2021, and they are both available for replay on YouTube from the Contest University website. Typically, we start with Ham Nation on Wednesday night. This is at the Crown Plaza. And of course, uh, Contest University has moved to the Hope Hotel now but uh, there's Bob Heil and Bell and B9L. And uh, this is what Contest University looks like at the opening session, uh, 350 students. And uh, it is a packed house. And uh, these, are, uh, these were the professors for Contest University in 2016. And uh, that is Joel W5ZN, who was a former president of the ARRL. He teaches a session on VHF contesting. And so uh, here are the professors that we had in 2019, Dr. Tamitha Scove, Joel, um, Bob Wilson, N6TV, Tim Jellison, W3YQ. All of these are, are leaders in uh, contest operating and we're sharing their experiences. We also had Bryant, KG5HVO, who, uh, so we do have a, a focus on youth in contesting, and uh, also gold medal winners, Dan N6MJ and Chris KL9A from WRTC 2014, and uh, they have been uh, professors as well. We do have um, sponsors, DX Engineering, the Northern California DX Foundation sponsors uh, scholarships for all our youth under 25 years old. ICOM America has been with us from day one. The YASME Foundation, is also very generous with their help and the Radio Club of America. Here's Ward Silver, N0AX, another luminary uh, who has written the book Ham Radio for Dummies. He's also the editor of the ARRL Handbook and the Antenna Book. 
And uh, the registration fee for Contest University includes uh, the uh, textbook, uh, includes breakfast and lunch and handouts, catalogs and a carry bag and also a um, t-shirt. And if you'd like to uh, purchase previous year's Contest University uh, textbooks, they're available at dxengineering.com. And also in the videos tab of the website, you can see uh, past presentations at Contest University. We talk about things of how to uh, optimize your HF station, maybe using ferrite to make sure that there's no RFI. Uh, again, a focus on youth. Here's Neil, WB9BPG, and one of his students from the uh, Bloomington High School. And uh, here's Terry, Kate MNJ. She is the uh, main coordinator for Contest University. And I, again, I, there's scholarships for those that are 25 years old or younger. ContestUniversity.com for all the information. It's a great website. And we do have contest universities all around the world. Uh, we've had them in Russia and Australia and Germany and England, and Finland and Brazil, and uh, 15 different countries have held contest universities. So very, very proud of the brand and uh, over 10,000 students have graduated from contest university. So those are, that is my presentation and I am available for any questions you might have. Tim, thank you very much. Appreciate those that uh, Contest University is huge. I've been part of the last two online pieces and that, uh, uh, oh, that uh, those are great, uh, great resources for people. Um, I, I'm gonna ask a real quick question. You brought up four letters that I've always tried to find somebody that knew something about, which is WRTC. Um, we, we were talking about something like that and teasing that it's, uh, oh, it was the IROC of amateur radio where they if you're not familiar with the amateur or with the racing world um, the international race of champions is where they put everybody in the same style car and wrtc i think does the same thing but uh, can you expound a little bit on wrtc just uh, to talk about it i can um i have uh, i've been i've operated in five of the wrtcs which is the world radio team championship and it is very similar to IROC in that uh, everybody is playing on a level playing field with uh, a 100 watt radio and uh, the, the same antenna systems. And uh, they've here in the last several WRTCs, they've equalized all the QTHs so that uh, people have virtually the same operating environments. So it, it really comes down to the operators and uh, their ability to work together as a team. Um, and uh, so it is uh, an equalized playing field. And um, it's, it's quite exciting. The last one I operated was uh, in Germany and uh, it was a great event. Uh, the Germans put on a, a super, super show. And um, so uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Do they sell the uh, radios with uh, pace car style uh, graphics on the side so that people can collect them like they do the Camaros? Uh, typically, uh, the WRTCs, you have to bring your own radios. So um, my WRTC radio is, is with me, but I don't have any fancy stickers on it. Oh, so you, you just, you're just limited in power. You can bring your own radio. I thought it was the same equipment. Oh. No, no, you, you can bring your own. Um, and there is a, a, a very um, complicated watt meter that makes sure that you're not running anything more than 100 watts. But if you want to bring a tube boat, boat anchor, you can do that. Uh, most of us had, uh, you know, ICOM, uh, L-Craft, Yesu, uh, up-to-date radios. Um, we used the IC7610 in the last WRTC. Uh, Ed, Ed, the, the guys for leading the uh, meeting today, one of the purchases was a 7610 recently. So he loves that radio and that's a good choice on his case. Anybody have any questions online? Remember, you got to unmute if you're there and need to have a question. Yeah, Quincy, Kilo X-Ray 5 Sierra. Go ahead, Quincy. Mr. Duffy, I've... Uh... I've been looking at the Ciro Mazzoni loop 
for my HOA situation. Have you used that antenna and do you recommend it? I'm sure you do uh, since you sell it, but what's your thoughts on it? <laughs> yeah, Quincy, uh, thanks very much for the question. And, and it's a great question. Uh, I have not used it myself, but I can tell you that a lot of people that have uh, restricted space have got that loop and have uh, had really good results on the air. So, um, you know, and I, I don't know how many reviews, but I think there are reviews on the DX engineering website of that loop. And uh, I would take a look at those reviews, but I, you know, Quincy, one of the things that I watch very closely at DX engineering is uh, the number of returns on various products. And we don't get those loops back. Um, you know, a customers seem to be very happy with them. So um, I would say it, it, it's a, a great way to, uh, you know, if you've got an HOA situation, you can get on the air. All right, sir, I appreciate it. I, uh, I drove right by DX Engineering last summer. I couldn't get off due to construction. I was very sad. So thank you for what you do and uh, I love your store. Thank you very much, Quincy. <laughs> you can see it. You can't get there. That's just, that's even worse. I see the promised land. Oh, wait, that's a different, that's a different book. I see the promised land. I can't get there. Anybody local have any questions that they want to ask of, uh, of Tim? We actually used a loop um, last weekend at a, um, an airport. We did an airport demonstration and used an ICOM 705 radio that uh, we were using, uh, it was at 40 meters is what you end up getting good. 40, 40 meters on the stupid loop that was five foot in diameter sitting on a tripod uh, between two aircraft hangars. And we were hitting uh, from, from Norman, Oklahoma, we were hitting Austin, Illinois and Colorado. It just opened up a lot of people's eyes. I, I still don't understand the magic or the smoke or the mirrors or the uh, electronics of that one, but that thing seems to be taking popular. Those uh, loops seem to be popular now. All right, one more. Kilo Delta Five Uniform Golf Yankee. Just a comment. I like dealing with uh, DX Engineering. Thank you very much. And, um, Yet another happy customer. Another happy customer. KD Five UGO. At your big contesting station, do you use any kind of cavity or ferrite transceiver combiners? or do you use basically one antenna per transceiver? Uh, basically it's one antenna per transceiver. We don't uh, really, we don't share between uh, the various radios. So each, each radio and amplifier has its own antenna system. So we're not using any combiners here. Uh, good morning. This is a uh, cage six triple A portable five. Tom, uh, could you let us know how you got started in ham radio and if you were original Heath kit uh, uh, worker or how you got got going there? Uh, uh, good morning, Tom. Nice to have you uh, with us. Um, I I was first licensed in 1972 when I was 12 years old. My first language is CW. English is my second language. Um, I learned CW at a very early age, and I am on CW every day, uh, working stations. And yes, Tom, I built a lot of Heath kits. I, I had a paper route um, when I was uh, 13 and 14 years old, and all the paper route money went to Heath kit. So uh, I built an SB102 transceiver, the SB200 amplifier, and um, that those I I wish I had never sold them. That was a a big mistake, but uh, this coming May, we'll, I'll celebrate 50 years as a ham, and it is absolutely the best hobby in the world. There's no doubt in my mind. Anybody else have more questions? Doesn't look like it. Where, where do you see the future of uh, uh, contesting going? Is it, is it uh, uh, opening up new, new lands for 
do you see uh, all the digital folks taking over or adding some stuff or uh, any movement in that area? You know, um, FT8 and FT4, um, there are contests that are, you know, completely digital on FT8 and FT4. Uh, it's just another one of the many great things about this hobby. Uh, I don't see them taking over per se. I, I see it as additive. Um, RTTY contesting is still very popular, as is CW contesting. It, there's, there's never been more activity on CW and sideband and RTTY as there is right now. And uh, I'm very optimistic that uh, we have a lot of uh, focus on getting youth uh, interested in contesting. Um, they, they are seem to have a lot of fun with it. And uh, there is uh, Yoda Youth on the Air that is uh, very, very active around the world, not just in the United States, but in Europe and in Asia. So I think the future is very bright for amateur radio and contesting in particular. Does the Yoda group have any uh, gamification uh, activities on them where they can compete with, uh, within themselves? Or I, you know, I've not chased that one down. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, I serve on the CQ Worldwide uh, contest committee on the committee itself. And we have uh, focused in on youth in particular, where there are youth trophies and plaques being given this year for the first time. So, um, and I think it's uh, upwards of 20 different awards, all focused at youth. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a question. Oh, I'm not on? Oh, I'm on now. Oh, I, I'm KI5CWB, and I'm from Norman, and I... I guess I, I'm placing this. So I was with SCARS and I think I went to one of their winter field days and they had an antenna set up in a base station. And I was basically shoulder surfing a guy. And um, so I, I'm guessing that this, um, you were talking about contesting in your first presentation and, and like your second, what the contest university was, was it just, um, kind of a deeper dive into what that was. It was not necessarily, uh, I mean, you had equipment too. I don't, I don't know if it was like how to build equipment, but it was just how to work the, the net and how that works or just wants a little bit more context. Yeah, uh, Contest University is a, a, a focus on operating and building your station. So, um, and if you, uh, later on, if you take a look at the website and take a look at, there are presentations on the website and then there are video links. Uh, so you can watch some of the presentations as well. Uh, you can really learn a lot from that uh, on how to set up antennas, how to optimize your station, how to get the most out of it. And then uh, operating techniques uh, too for uh, you know, propagation, and uh, utilizing all the features on your radio, et cetera. So it's a, it's a very deep dive into uh, the ham radio area of contesting. Good, I'll put a call out. Anybody on, online that would have a question, feel free to unmute and jump in and say hi to Tim. I hear nothing here. Anybody else have a question locally? Everybody's, everybody's got their question solved. That Contest University site is amazing. I know that um, even if you're not a contester, you can get a lot of good information from that site because uh, you can build your normal station as a contest station. and Stay away from the contests, um, but uh, you can actually learn a lot from that site. And uh, yes, Riddy is huge around this part of the world. I know that uh, a couple of our guys are, are Riddy contest winners in the local area. So uh, they've been pushing that one. The other one that I know that we've done a lot of recently is the, uh, con uh, the collegiate contest stuff. There's some collegiate contests out there that OU folks down here at the Weather Service 
have done some work and I know you're involved in our project to put that thing back together. So we appreciate your help on that as well. Anybody else, anything else? Follow-ups, anybody? Quiet here. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate your time for the day and uh, thank you very much. What's your next part of the day? You're going to go out and work a contest or you got to mow the lawn? No, <laughs> no, we're not going to mow the lawn, uh, but uh, we are going to be active in the Pennsylvania QSO party that starts in about an hour. And uh, once again, I want to say hello to all the my fellow Oklahomans uh, for 14 years. Edmond, Oklahoma was uh, my home and uh, moved back here in 2013 to take the job at DX Engineering and uh, but uh, have been down to uh, Norman many times and um, still very close with uh, Kim and 5OP and uh, we're going to work together with Kim to get uh, the Skyhawk back up on the, uh, the tall area there and uh, to those of you who are DX Engineering customers I want to thank you very much for your business uh, to those of you who are not, give us a try. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how well it goes. Uh, we do have uh, two places we ship out of. We ship out of Talmadge, Ohio, and also Sparks, Nevada. So uh, being in Oklahoma, you might get your order from Sparks, or you might get it from Talmadge. But I do know this. If you place your order during the week uh, before 9 p.m. Central Time, it's going to ship that night. And uh, as long as we have it in stock, it's going to ship that night. So we do have very fast ground shipping and uh, we try to stock everything that you might want to have to enjoy this great hobby. So uh, for now, 73 from K3LR in Western Pennsylvania. One last thing, sir, W5HLG, name is Lee and love the X engineering, but you being from Oklahoma or at least spending some time here, Today is Texas OU weekend. So I have to say, boomer. <laughs> boomer. <laughs> well, well, good luck to, uh, to the OU fans there, which everybody I'm sure in the room is. Oh no, and there's still, there's some orange in the room. There's some orange there. Yeah, I see, I see a little bit of orange too. Um, we're going to be tied up uh, this afternoon watching, uh, Iowa and Penn State, which is my alma mater, and uh, but uh, we're I wish the best for the Sooners. <laughs> Thank Good you. deal. They'll need. I mean, they'll do fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate. It. Have a great day. All right. See everybody later. Seventy three. Seventy three, man. Head back to you. Okay. So normally we got a quick break here. If you need, get up, grab a donut, hit the men's room, and then we'll start a quick business meeting. So if you got two three minutes, this is the time to take it. I think those in orange need to take the time to change their shirts. <laughs> Aubrey. Yeah, OSU is going to the uh, Pac-12.